So in this video, we're going to look at case 3, where the denominator uh, qx contains irreducible quadratic factors. So in order to understand what we mean by that, uh, basically uh, an irreducible quadratic factor, as you can see here, uh, is when you have a quadratic factor that is um, where the b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, which means essentially if you were to solve this quadratic equal to 0, you wouldn't be able to find any real roots except the complex roots, in fact. So uh, such a quadratic is called uh, irreducible, which means you cannot factorize it. Essentially, that's what it means. You cannot factor it into linear factors. So it is irreducible. So an example of this would be, for instance, so in other words, it means uh, if, for instance, x squared plus 4, this is an irreducible quadratic. You cannot reduce it any further than this. Uh, another example would be x squared plus 1, x squared plus 10, and so on. And there are others, of course, where, for instance, here's another example, x squared plus x plus 1, and so on. So these are all irreducible uh, quadratics. So for instance, if we have a situation where we have a fraction like this, uh, for instance, x squared plus 1 into x plus 1, then this uh, cannot be further factorized into linear uh, factors. So therefore, we have to have a mechanism or a method for uh, basically trying to find the partial fractions of something like this. And that's uh, the objective uh, for case 3. So in a situation like this, for instance, uh, what we would do is uh, we would say this is equal to, first of all, we take ax plus b for the x squared plus 1. So as you can see, this is one degree less uh, than it. So basically, whatever quadratic uh, irreducible quadratics you have here, you will always raise them with ax plus b, the a linear, the uh, general linear in, in, in essence. And of course, plus we have these uh, straightforward x plus 1. So that will be as we've done before. So this basically is the this is the new uh, uh, basic addition of case three, which is if we have uh, we, if we have uh, irreducible quadratics like this x squared plus one, then we use ax plus b. For instance, another example could be we've got two irreducible quadratic factors in this case, and they're distinct, of course. So the first you'll have ax plus b, and that will be divided by uh, x squared plus x plus one. And then you'd have cx plus d, because the other uh, is also irreducible. And you'll end up with, basically, uh, here, x squared plus 7. So this is basically how we do the uh, partial fractions. Now, further, the next steps are all the same as what we've seen before. You multiply both sides by the denominator. And then, of course, you look for the constants as in the usual manner. In this case, in the cases of irreducible quadratics, you end up actually using more of the uh, comparison of coefficients uh, than in normal cases. So let's look at a full example now. So let's look at this example. We've already done the partial fractions uh, separated here. So you've got one linear factor here, x, and there's your irreducible quadratic. And of course, it's as we've said before, bx plus c, x squared plus 4. The procedure is the, is the same as we've done before. So the next step will multiply by the denominator, both sides. So we end up with this. Um, there you see the, the numerator is left, of course. And here we have these factored as, as you see, uh, you know, multiplying both sides by the denominator. Next, we want to proceed now to calculate um, basically the values of the constants. And the way we proceed is we still have, we do have one uh, value, which is x equals zero. We can employ that. And if we let x equal to zero, this gives us basically four on this side, and it gives us four uh, a, and basically nothing from here. So this, uh, nothing from, from here. So therefore, uh, this implies that a is in fact one. So we've got one of our values. Now the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to move to the um, uh, comparison of coefficients. So let's do that next. So after collecting the terms and opening up all the brackets, we end up with uh, what you see here, a plus bx squared cx plus 4a. Now comparing the, comparing the coefficients, we get 
of course a plus b is equal to 2 and c is equal to minus 1 and of course uh, 4a is equal to 4 because the coefficient of the x squared remember a plus b here and uh, a plus b over here and it's 2 here and similarly c is the coefficient here and minus 1 here and so on so now we already have the value of a so the first equation tells us and and by the way notice that c is uh, given directly so this implies that uh, b in fact is equal to also 1 so now we've got all our we've got the a we've got b and we've got c here as well so we end up with so here we get the partial fractions 1 over x plus x minus 1 over x squared plus 4 clearly you can see b is 1 so uh, b uh, is 1 so therefore there you'll see here b is 1 so that's why you have x and then c here is uh, minus 1 that's why you see the negative 1 here over x squared over x squared plus 4 so those basically are our partial fractions and that's how we calculate the partial fractions of this case the last case which is case 4 so case 4 is uh, that there are uh, irreducible quadratic forms, some of which are repeated so essentially it means for instance uh, what would we do with a case like uh, here let me quickly give you an example for instance if we had 2x plus 1 and it was divided by x squared plus 3 uh, cubed and multiplied by x minus 3 so we've got this is our repeated one uh, here so e okay so ax plus b divided by x squared plus 3 then we'll have cx plus d and x squared plus 3 squared and then of course ex plus f over x squared plus 3 cubed and of course the final one uh, g over x minus 3 so that's basically how we would split those partial fractions and there you can see the the repeated partial fraction and the repeated redu uh, irreducible quadratic is here x squared plus 3 cubed and we've dealt with it the same way as we would have done with a repeatable or repeated linear factor so we start with the power 1 then power 2 and power 3 and keep progressing depending on what power this over here is since it's 3 we have three terms but notice that the numerator each time is a linear general linear so ax plus b cx plus d and ex plus f so hopefully this uh, helps you to understand all the four cases now we've covered all four cases uh, for uh, calculating partial fractions in the next video we're going to start looking at the actual integration and how we combine the two ideas we'll stop here thank you